Um, let's get started. Uh, my name is Sean O'Dell. I'm a senior staff architect at VMware. Uh, I've been a part of the cloud services business unit for almost two years now. I'm solely dedicated to public cloud. Um, obviously, we're going to talk about cloud health uh, in this portion of our session today. Uh, I uh, was a part of the team from VMware that uh, went forward and made the acquisition. I get to help with a lot of the product strategy, where we're going, what we're doing, where we're moving. So uh, have a little bit of fun with this today. I'm actually going to get through like five or six slides, and then we'll jump into EC2, RDS. We'll jump into Cloud Health as well, Lambda, show you a bunch of different things uh, that uh, actually are applicable in some ways to uh, really accomplish a variety of things. It's really about governance and cost, um, optimization, and just how it works with Cloud Health. Um, this slide's pretty simple. Our goal at VMware, uh, from, from what we call the VMware Cloud Services uh, Group, is really three, three areas of focus. Hybrid IT, um, obviously this is VMware Cloud on AWS. Um, if you haven't looked at it, take a look. Um, extending the traditional VMware you know, data center into the cloud, to the, to the edge, and so on, using vSphere as the platform of choice. Uh, my group, uh, my primary focus is what we call multi-cloud operations. Uh, and so I focus on things like automation, infrastructure as code, cost compliance, insight, you know, uh, analytics, visibility, if you want to use that term. And then the third area, my peer, Dan, he focuses on Kubernetes. Uh, and, and we'll talk a little bit of it at the end, uh, how VMware is taking Kubernetes and uh, doing a few different things with it. What's uh, something we call Cloud PKS, uh, as well as PKS. Um, we've got a couple options when you get there. Um, our goal is to deliver this in a cloud services fashion, right? So everything I'm talking about today requires no on-premises data center. I know that sounds weird from a VMware employee, but no, I don't require any sort of on-premises data center. Everything is done as a service utilizing our services uh, as well as uh, native AWS services. So in, in, uh, in my uh, section today, um, I'm going to focus mostly on cloud health. Uh, and, and where that integration point is, yes, we do support multi-cloud. Um, obviously, I'm at Amazon, so I'm going to be respectful and we'll only talk about Amazon. Uh, but we, we also have a few other areas that we've um, integrated or will be integrating with Cloud Health to make this new Cloud Health platform as we're building it out. Something called Secure State, uh, which is really about deep security um, and learning patterns of behavior security from a configuration perspective. And then uh, we'll add a few things uh, around what we call connected threats. Um, you can ask me questions about that maybe later. Uh, or I'll, I think I have a session tomorrow where I'll talk about it. Um, and then the third area, and you've, you may have seen a few of these sessions on Wavefront, um, really metrics, visibility, um, streaming of data, and opera, you know, operational data, but really bringing all of that together. Uh, and, and we do support multiple clouds. Here's some of the quick marketing slides for everybody, because we have to. Um, we're going to look at cost today. We're going to look at how cloud health provides cost visibility, um, cost optimization, if you want to go, uh, go in that route. Maybe looking at RIs, um, can I you know, utilize different EC2 instances to improve my spending day in and day out. Um, and then uh, I mentioned Secure State, and then obviously Wavefront. Uh, and then uh, there, there's really two approaches that we're kind of taking this at. Um, it's the you know, traditional or, or instance-based, which is VM-based, so we'll look at EC2. Uh, and then uh, we also have the ability to support containers within Cloud Health. Um, and, and I think as you see where our goals and objectives are, um, this is going to continue to expand. Um, real quick, who is a Cloud Health customer? Anybody a Cloud Health customer? Nobody? Has anybody used Cloud Health before? Okay. All right, then I'll, uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. Yes, I'm done with slides. Let's get into the demo. And uh, we'll get into some code as well. So one of the things to, uh, to think about, uh, what, what our team has done, um, we've actually built a series of applications um, that are sitting natively in Amazon. Um, I have my lovely splash screen page here just to help. Just so you see, this is real. Um, I'm going to take a look at one of my web servers, then there's my secondary web server. Really, the goal of this is pretty simple. I can come in, I can fill out my form, and I can sign up for our lovely, you know, unicycle. Um, so this is a fully functioning app, just, just so everybody's aware. Um, we've got two different versions of this. Uh, one of them is uh, fully built in EC2, utilizing what you would say, you know, traditional 
instances or VM instances. Um, so in my case, I have uh, right here FitCycle. Uh, we do everything with tagging, right? We, we want to make sure we're utilizing the, uh, the, the, the proper uh, AWS resources. So let me uh, see what happened to my wireless here. Or not. There we go. All right. I don't know why. Notice it's not loading tags. I'll blame Amazon. Let me, let me just pick one here just so everybody sees it. I will alter. So in, in this example, I've got um, a traditional, what we call a traditional app. I've got two database servers uh, that are running as EC2 instances with MySQL. Uh, and then we have uh, two API servers, two app servers, and I'll show you that in just a minute, uh, as well as uh, load balancers, you know, load balancing uh, equal sides. And then uh, we have uh, web front ends, load balanced, all that good stuff. Uh, we had the same application that we removed the MySQL dependencies and went to RDS. Um, we're doing uh, multi-AZ with RDS. Um, and, and really our goal with this, we do this across clouds, but um, we want to show kind of a real world scenario of a functioning application. These applications are running all the time. Um, our team utilizes uh, them and, and we make modifications and adjust and do a bunch of different things. So these are really, you know, real world apps uh, running on, uh, you know, Amazon. So with that, if I jump into Cloud Health real quick, I can see quickly um, how much I'm spending. Now, uh, my team, uh, we, uh, we have a pretty standard, um, if you want to call it, method to what we're doing from a cost perspective, from an application perspective. So from really about June until December, we run these applications hot. Right, so we're, we're running them all the time. And you say, why is that? Well, we're, we're basically run up to VMworld and then through KubeCon, uh, which is in December. And then we'll spin those resources back down uh, and we'll spin them back up as necessary. So that's why you see, really for, for the first part of the year, um, we, we really hadn't been doing a lot with them. Uh, and, and you notice June, July, August, September, right, and so on. Um, and, and the goal here is to truly give you quick visibility. Our customers, when we look at Cloud Health, um, we have one of our accounts that connected, uh, I think, 18 or 19 AWS accounts. Uh, and quickly we had a, uh, a bill, and obviously this is a quick example of that. In this bill, um, I can see how much I'm spending on an EC2 perspective. Uh, obviously, CloudWatch, some of the things we're doing there. Um, EBS storage, uh, really this is a breakdown of what you want to see. So in my case, I don't really care about individual services. I'm looking at the broader perspective. And so I've got 56 EC2 instances that are running uh, images and a bunch of volumes as well as some snapshots. Um, and and we'll, we'll actually look at how to optimize some of the cost functions. Uh, and then notice RDS, right? Not doing a lot in RDS in this case. We actually do a lot on, on, the, uh, on the Azure side and Google side from, from a database perspective. But really the goal here is just quick visibility. That's the front page. Um, we also have reports, right? From a reporting and usage perspective, I've got cost history. Um, and, you know, it's the same thing I just showed you, but if I jump down and do usage, I can look at my EC2 usages uh, or usage from an EC2 perspective. I can change perspectives, views. Um, in, in my case, if I do a filter here, one of the things that we, we try to highlight for our customers is the way cloud costing or cloud consumption is very different than the traditional data center is you may have a line of business that wants to only see their data versus another line of business. And so we actually allow this thing called perspectives, um, utilizing in this case AWS tags. So in my group, um, we have a, a couple of perspectives. I created this one for VMware Cloud Services and quickly I can say, you know what, I only want to see the assets that belong to me. Uh, versus maybe my uh, my peer Prabhu, and then if I update it, I, by the way, I own all of these, so kind of kind of ruined my view. But uh, Prabhu doesn't have many, or neither does Tim. Um, the other thing we look at from a you know cost optimization perspective, and I'll show you this here. Um, in my environment, we're running so lean that I don't have a great example of uh, of RIs, and so um, we will tell you if 
you should purchase reserve instances rather than running you know, a bunch of EC2. It really comes down to what you as an organization want to do. Um, if I was to show you the VMware instance of Cloud Health, you'd probably be very surprised about what we're doing, um, how much we spend in native AWS, by the way. Um, but uh, in our case, we have actually gone through a six-month project um, where we now purchase RIs monthly. Uh, and we're utilizing the data from Cloud Health to do that. Uh, and it's really about optimization. Now, um, I've just given you kind of the high level overview real quick, because uh, I want to get into some fun stuff and code and actions and all that good thing. Um, so within, within our you know, data set here, excuse me, uh, we have this thing called recommendations. Uh, you can look at reservations, you know, our RI analyzer, um, our RI optimizer, if you want to go that route. We can do right sizing. Um, you know, Am I utilizing the resources that I have available to me in a you know in a in a in a in a functional fashion? Um, so we, we you know we can we can adjust accordingly, right? Um, the other thing that you uh, that we have here um, is under reports. We have security as well as governance, and so this is where I'm going to kind of shift and, and and talk a little bit about what you can do. Um, but in uh, in in my case. Um, we have a plethora of data, right? We're bringing in AWS configuration data. Um, you could bring, uh, whoa, that was not, that was weird. Sorry. Um, we can bring in CloudTrail. We can bring in Wavefront information from a VMware perspective. If you're using uh, Datadog, New Relic, uh, we actually support those as well. Um, and, and really our goal is to bring in the information as much as possible. So let me uh, show you a setup real quick. Under, under governance and setup, um, I have this notion called policies. Now, this is where I'm going to kind of shift away from the cloud health piece. One thing I'm going to talk about when I get into Lambda functions, um, cloud health obviously supports Lambda functions. These Lambda functions that I have built is a couple of examples, um, and I'll show you, you know, wh why we're triggering them. Uh, but in, in this case, you actually can use this without cloud health. So, you know, take them, use them accordingly. I can put them up on GitHub if, uh, if, it, if everybody wants it. Um, and so in my case, I've got actions. This is out of the box actions from within Cloud Health. Um, and so I'll just show you what's available. In, in our case, I've only got three of them configured. Um, I've got starting an EC2 instance. I've got modifying RIs within, uh, within Amazon, as well as running Lambda functions. And then we've got some other actions that are native inside of Cloud Health. Right? So underneath the, the, the covers, they're actually using Lambda functions um, and API calls to make changes. Uh, so stopping an instance, uh, you know, rebooting an instance, some simple things. Um, I'll show you some, some, some of the Lambda functions that I've built in the policies that go along with it. Um, so to, to, to give that perspective, I'm going to look at some of the policies. Now, natively out of the box, we've got some security foundational policies. We've got AWS best practices. And tied to those are modifications or changes, right? You can uh, change a you know, security group if you so desire. Uh, you can you know, unattach or unallocate uh, EIPs um, and actually remove those from your account if you want. I've created two. Uh, so in my application instance, we want to run our app like I said, it's not a, you know, a, a, an everyday app, so we want to keep our costs low. So based upon policies, I actually have within Cloud Health, every, every so often, I actually will go truncate the database. Pretty simple stuff. It's running in Python. I'll show it to you. As well as I do updating of, a, of the tables. So um, we have an automated traffic generator running in Python. It's called Gremlin. Um, and it's actually going out and updating the database with, um, it's basically hitting the form that I showed you earlier and actually inputting the information, populating the traffic, adding it to the database, and so on. So uh, we, we've, uh, that's written in Python, right? That's where you get into the Lambda functions. Um, the other thing to think about is you can set a policy really on what you want to do. Um, in, in, in our case, I'm really focused on lean application utilization. I don't need some massive RDS database with a bunch of fake data. Um, so we keep it pretty clean. I actually wiped it here earlier, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it here in just a second. So enough about cloud health. Let's look at Lambda um, and, and, and see where I built a couple of policies um, that actually focus on this. So in my case, this policy here is I'm looking for an EC2 instance that belongs to me, and it's in my perspective group, and there's a couple of conditions. I'm looking for an AWS tag called app with the name of the, uh, the application, and then the second tag I'm looking for is an EC2 instance um, that has the tier of database. I'm looking for specific assets within my data uh, to then make actions and, and to run actions against. 
So in this case, I'm going to truncate the database. Uh, but here is my Lambda function. And just so you see here, we have the ability to make changes to, uh, to, to do actions within uh, Cloud Health. In this case, I'm running a Lambda function, and I'll just walk you through it. It's going to pick up my Lambda functions that I currently have inside of my environment. Um, I've got a couple of them here, Gremlin, Truncate. I've got a uh, RDS update. Um, and then I can set, you know, based on a specific perspective group, line of business, um, and I can also add authorizer. So I'm the authorizer in this case. I could remove it, and it would automatically do it. Um, but to, to kind of help you with the code part, so let me shift gears, and uh, I'll kind of show you what I did um, to, uh, to, to get going from a Lambda perspective. Now, uh, who knows Python? Anybody know Python? Okay, you can raise your hand. If you don't, you'll have to figure it out. Um, but in this case, uh, I used uh, Amazon's Cloud9. Uh, so Amazon has a uh, really, I actually like it. It's an IDE environment called Cloud9. Um, it spins up an Amazon Linux instance, and it's basically yours to build Lambda functions. Um, and so in my case, I've already got it running. And here's a couple of the, the, the functions that I have built. Um, but what I wanted to show you is, you know, as you're building out these Lambda functions, as you're building out these actions based upon your, you know, your data set, your information, what you're trying to do, um, I'm giving you a few simple examples that are using you know, MySQL uh, as, uh, is, uh, as one of the options. So in this case, let me, um, I'm actually going to show you. This is an, a, a running Amazon Linux instance, so I can actually just look and see what's inside of, uh, inside of the environment. And then it packages up the function. It will actually add it via a CloudFormation template. Um, and then it will be available to me in Lambda, and then obviously Cloud Health picks it up. So in this example, uh, I am looking at the RDS update table. Pretty simple. Um, to, to help everybody here, I'm, I'm importing system. Uh, logging an RDS config, which is my config file. Um, I cheated and created a config file. You could also use environment variables. I'll show that to you in a second. As well as I'm importing Python MySQL or PyMySQL. Uh, and in my case, I've got a couple of uh, you know uh, variables, as you can tell here. This is my RDS config. So I've got you know RDS config uh, data for the database name, the username, uh, the password, and uh, and so on. The key is I'm using this against RDS, but you can actually do this against any MySQL database, right? Uh, so it, it, it really gives you options. Um, in our case, we could also do it because we're running you know, MySQL. From there, I've got logging. Here's my connection string. I'm basically going to do a MyC uh, PyMySQL connection with the parameters that I put in that RDS config. Uh, and then I'm going to execute a few lines of code. In this example, I'm only going to run insert. Um, five times of a couple of attributes and, and users. I'm cheating in this case rather than going to the form. I'm actually doing it directly to the database. But here's the fun part. When you're looking at Cloud9 from an IDE perspective, I actually have the ability to connect to the database from within the IDE. And you know, if I wanted to do some testing, oh, nope, nope, no password, wrong. Why? What is going on here? That'd be funny. Oh, okay, good. Uh, maybe one of my peers changed the password in the middle of his session too. Whoops. Uh, but we, we tend to step on each other. Uh, so in this case, I'm now in MySQL. I'm accessing the RDS database. Uh, I can actually do a bunch of different things here, right? I can just say, hey, what are my, uh, what are my records? So there's polls.prospect. And what did I do? Oh. Give me just a minute here. Duh. There we go. Simple. Happens when you don't have from in there. Genius. Um, and so in this case, just wanted to show you something really you know, simple and easy. Um, if I jump over now into Lambda. So I have created these functions. Uh, and if I go back here, I've got an RDS update table. If you see here, update table. I've got Gremlin. I've got a truncate. Now, in my case, I've used the IDE from Cloud9 from Amazon, so it is actually updating it automatically. Uh, and so I updated one five days ago. I made a modification to one yesterday. If I actually go in, I can do an RDS update table, and I'm going to run a quick test. Now, I'm running this from Lambda. You say, why are you not triggering this from Cloud Health? Because in Cloud Health, I have very specific times in which it triggers, and my session here is only 30 minutes, right? So I'm going to go ahead and trigger it from here just as a test. And you notice here I had a success. 
Now, in my case, I will see that I added additional tables to the database. Uh, and if I jump back into my IDE, so notice before I had 15 records, now I have 20 records, right? So I'm calling a Lambda function. Uh, in my case, I'm cheating rather than using Cloud Health, right, from a specific perspective. But remember, my Cloud Health policy, I can run it every day at 6 a.m. I can add it, you know, in random times, random weeks, whatever you want it to be. But really the goal here is just to show you how easy it is to create policies to run certain functions, in this case being Lambda. Yeah, the other thing I can do uh, in my data set is I've got the truncate. So uh, I'm actually going to run in here and I'm going to run this truncate just, just to, because I want to. So now it's successful. Pretty simple stuff. Now if I hop back, I got nothing in the database, right? So in my case, I'm doing some you know, very generic modifications to the environment. But really the goal here is, is what we found as we've talked with customers is uh, it really depends on what you want to do, right? If you want to use the native actions within uh, Cloud Health, you can make EC2 modifications. But you know what, we can get pretty creative. In my environment, I'm looking for a specific tag that when was the last time it was backed up, right? In our, what we call our other production environment. It, 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 you can have a tag that says, hey, when was the last time this, this database was backed up? And maybe you want to back up that RDS database to S3. Right, so the goal is using the native AWS functions uh, or services, in this case, Lambda, RDS, S3, to actually do all of it for you in stream. So and that's one of the, be the, the beauties of Cloud Health is you can use the native services if, if, uh, if you so desire. Um, the other thing I'll show you here, um, because we use tags, um, we're consuming all of the tags inside of Cloud Health, right? And this is my RDS instance. Um, hopefully there's nothing secure out here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I've got snapshots, I've got a bunch of tags in my environment, right? I can look for a specific RDS tag to then make a modification uh, or for Cloud Health to, to trigger uh, the, uh, the Lambda function, maybe one of the ones that I already picked um, that's available to me, right? It, it really just depends on how you want to consume this. Really what I wanted to show is how, how utilizing those native services, the native functions, the things that we're doing each and every day inside of Amazon, that, that allows us to, uh, to, you know, to call those services and functions from there. Um, the other thing I want to show you is kind of what this looks like underneath the covers. So when you're using Cloud9 from Amazon, which is obviously building your Lambda functions, um, it's going to use CloudFormation, actually automatically create your CloudFormation templates. So um, I chose US West in this case. So you notice here I have all of the CloudFormation templates that were utilized to create the Lambda function from Cloud9. Um, and so there's my truncate table. And you can see here I've made a bunch of modifications. You know, you can utilize uh, the CloudFormation templates. You can strip them out. You know, you can add and make modifications to it if you wanted to. The, the, the fun thing about um, uh, RDS uh, Cloud9, or excuse me, about uh, Cloud9, I'll actually show you here. Let me create a new instance of a new function. So just test. I'm going to choose an empty Python. By the way, uh, you can do Node.js. You can really get creative how you want to do this. Um, and then there's a trigger if you wanted to create the trigger uh, off the API, API gateway. Um, and then I'm also going to automatically generate my, my, uh, my role, right? So I don't have to own the IAM policies. It's built in to Cloud9 as it, it obviously uh, is added, right? So depending on how you want to do that, I can choose an existing or I can have it automatically generate. Uh, for me. I've automatically generated uh, the, the ones in my environment here. So you just see a quick summary of what we have done. I'm tying Cloud9 or Lambda functions back to Cloud Health. So uh, let me show you one more time back in Cloud Health uh, of what we've done. And uh, you can obviously run it at a specific time. But here's the update table policy. Um, I don't have it enabled right now. Um, but uh, in this case, I'm looking for an instance. I'm looking for specific tags of an associated instance. Then Cloud Health is going to send, in reality, it's actually going to send back the metadata where I have an environment variable where Lambda is going to grab that environment variable and make the modification to a database or to whatever resource you may you so desire. And here is that Lambda function right here. So just kind of a quick example. You can test the rule if you wanted to. It would run the Lambda function for you. Um, and this is just a few of the options that we have within, uh, within Cloud Health. So with that in mind, um, I think I've shown you all of the pieces that I wanted to show you from an Amazon perspective. So let me jump back into, uh, into the deck. I'll show you two slides, and then, uh, and then we'll be done. Fix this for the webcast. 
So in my case, uh, we just did the demo. Um, the other thing I would like to talk about just real quick is an announcement we made a couple of weeks ago called Cloud PKS. Um, Cloud PKS is really a uh, fully managed service of Kubernetes running on top of Amazon. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, we'll add other public clouds. But our, our really our goal is native Kubernetes in a managed service, uh, pr from a managed service perspective. It's available today, actually. Um, a couple of sessions are going on. Anybody notice we made an acquisition not only of Cloud Health, but we made the intent to acquire Heptio. Anybody seen that? Um, uh, VMware actually has four boosts this year at Amazon because we bought two companies that already had boosts. But uh, um, yeah, so we're going to bring the Heptio folks in, and we're actually going to do a lot of expansion on the Kubernetes side. Um, but our goal is to look at operations not only from a you know a public cloud perspective, but also from a cloud native and a Kubernetes perspective. And this is just an example of it. Um, if you jump out to cloud.vmware.com, you can actually see all of our services that are available to you. Um, in this case, if you want to request access to the Cloud PKS service, you can jump out there, fill out a form. Um, you actually get $150 credit right now if you want to. So jump out there, grab it, um, use it, hack it. Uh, my, one of my peers did a session on Cloud PKS earlier today. Uh, and then I'll ha they'll have another one later this afternoon. But uh, this just gives you, you know, a high-level idea of... Uh, of Cloud PKS. So take a look at that. Uh, with that, I am right up on time, and I want to say thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions for me, what VMware is doing in the cloud services space, you know, within the public cloud space, uh, and, you know, just general direction and trend and all that good stuff. But other than that, thank you, and uh, thanks for being here this week and stopping by. Appreciate it.